Okay, are we on? Hi, baby. Hi. Wait. All right, where are we? Uh, it's, uh, there. Okay, there we go. Hi, baby. Hi, Di. So, I know last time we talked, you said you're getting busy with school now, and you don't have time to talk on the phone every day to your poor neglected mother, like we've been doing for the first couple of months you were there. So... I thought I would record these video messages to you and just send them to you, and that way you can watch them on your own time and just get back to me whenever. Huh? Smart, right? Kidneys. So, is everything still good? Did you get that worked out with your AP credit, I hope? You know, the offer's still good if you need your mother to make a phone call to anyone. I'll straighten them right out. You know how it is when Karen De Benedetti is on the case. But yes, I know. You're an adult now, taking care of your own business. Ugh. 18. Oh. Yes, yes, Di, you're very capable. But you'll always be my little girl, and I love you. <laughs> okay, so, what's going on? Oh, I guess obviously the big news is we got a new president. Very exciting, President Trump. I know it isn't who you wanted. I saw you posting on your Instas of people crying. I know you wanted Hillary, yay, girl power, or whatever. But really, it's better this way. I mean, Clinton, yuck. You know I don't follow politics, but she is just no good. I mean, Whitewater, Benghazi, just everything. But really, who cares? You think anything's really gonna change? It doesn't, it never does. I didn't even vote until I was 30. And then I just voted for whoever's name sounded the prettiest. But I liked going and standing in line and chatting with the neighbors, getting a sticker, you know? It's fun, something to do. But I know it doesn't have any effect. I just know the same thing everybody else knows. Don't vote for Democrats. <laughs> Although sometimes I break that rule if their names are prettier. Don't tell your father. I mean, honestly, what am I supposed to do? Sit at home and, like, research all 50 people running for every office? Like, I care who's a judge, a comptroller, or a postmaster general. Voting is just something you do because everybody else does. Like shaving your pits. It's stupid. Really, what's important is we all just get along and move forward in love and peace because we are all so blessed to live in this wonderful country, America. Oh, got a lash. Eh. I mean, really, as people, politicians, it's not even a real job. Getting paid to do nothing? That's why Trump is the best choice. He's not one of these Washington insiders. He's a businessman, a very successful businessman. He doesn't have anything to prove. He's just coming and doing this out of the goodness of his heart. Wasn't that amazing how he just came out of nowhere? It's like no political, politics, anything, and then suddenly he's the president. <laughs> it just does go to show you that in America you can do anything if you just work hard enough. And now he's gonna come in there and do the hard work. Drain the swamp, fix the mess Obama left. Gah. I may not know politics, but I know this. It's just like Glenn Beck said, worst president of my lifetime. Whatever happened to him? Is he still on TV? You remember we used to put him on in the kitchen while I made dinner and you worked on your homework? Cute guy. Speaking of which, you found any cute guys yet, huh? Anybody in your classes? Ugh, to be a pretty young thing walking around a college campus? You going to any parties, huh? Maybe some fraternity parties? If you are going to some parties, make sure you put yourself together. Shave your legs, okay? These are grown-up guys now. They're looking for a woman who knows how to present herself. No more jeans and sweatshirts. Wear some of those dresses I got you. And don't forget your bra. No one needs to see you poking through your top. Ugh, I can't believe you've already been gone for two whole months. And so far away. All the way in Connecticut. Did you find out if they have Martin's potato bread up there? I can mail you some if they don't. The house feels so empty without you. Just me and your father. Sometimes I turn on some Justin Bieber just to feel like you're still here. What else? Um, oh, we went to go see the Trolls movie. So cute. You remember Troll Dolls? I guess they might have been before your time. Well, the movie's about these trolls. And they sing and they dance and they're happy all the time. And the bad guys are these giants that want to eat the trolls. I was like... This is a kid's movie? And so the bad guys kidnap a bunch of these trolls, and that Anna Kendrick girl and Justin Timberlake from NSYNC go to rescue them. They're trolls. You remember when Justin Timberlake pulled out Janet Jackson's boob at the Super Bowl? That was weird. Anyway, Justin Timberlake is a gray troll because his grandmother died. And then all the trolls are gray. Until he sings, and then he gets colorful and happy. So really a good message about not letting things get you down. You should see it. 
And we saw Sully, that movie about that plane that the guy landed in the Hudson. I tell you, that Tom Cruise can do anything. Anyway, that one started with this really scary dream sequence where, oh, oh there's your father. Gary! Gary, you want to say hi to Dynasty? Gary! 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 Yeah, he misses you. The doctor says his blood pressure's too high and he's got to lose weight, so what else is new? I got the new Paula Dean cookbook. Mm, excited to use that. She also has one out for this thing called an air fryer. So maybe I'll make your father get me one of those for Christmas. Oh, speaking of holidays, we did Halloween at the precinct with all your dad's police brothers. The costume theme was sports heroes. So your father went as Ed Westfall from the Islanders, of course. But you remember Max that works with your father? <laughs> he came as Muhammad Ali. He's just done up in black like this bronzer or something just all over him. And he had on these boxing gloves <laughs> and he couldn't sit down or touch anything all night. <laughs> He's just standing there in these shorts. He must have been freezing. Oh, we laughed. He had one of those boxing like thermoses with the little straw and he kept making people fill it up with beer. <laughs> oh, he was doing the voice. He came over and he was like, Karen, I'm going to float like a butterfly and drink like a fish. <laughs> I can't do it. So funny. <sighs> but he won the contest. Hmm? He got that gift certificate to Splish Splash, you know, the water park down in Ronkonkoma. So <laughs> he said it was worth it. Oh, maybe next year your dad can go as OJ Simpson. <laughs> Speaking of making yourself colored, I saw you posted a picture of your costume. Anger from Inside Out. Hmm. Very red. What, you couldn't have been Joy? I'd be Joy. I am Joy. <laughs> okay, anyway, before I wrap this up, I know you're not crazy about the new president, but here's something fun. You and the new president have the same birthday. Isn't that neat? So now when I'm checking your horoscope, it's like I'm checking the horoscope for the whole country. Cool, huh? So before I go, I hope this song makes you feel better. I know how much you miss my songs. In 1776, some great men decided to say, let's make a country where everyone's equal. We'll call it the United States of A. We'll get a flag with stars and stripes, one nation under God. Someday it'll have 50 states, and the other guys started to applaud. America, how are you so beautiful? America, you make me so very proud. America, so glad I get to live in you. America, from the sky up to the ground. From one shining sea to the other. Your mountains and your trees. You can be whatever you want to be. You can even be someone who raises bees. America, how are you the best? America, you are my greatest friend. America, I love you so, so much. America, forever and ever, amen. Hmm. Okay, so long, my love, my loins, my daughter. Dynasty de Benedetti, I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Hi, honey. I... This... This isn't the way I wanted to start this. I'm sorry. It's just, I'm so pissed right now. I can barely think straight. I don't even want to... So I'm in a rush because I have my petty at 1.30. But I have to eat, I know, because I haven't eaten all day. So I figure I'll just swing by McDonald's on Route 25A because that'll be fast. So I get in there and of course there's a line. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting. But finally I get to the front and I order my filet of fish with no tartar sauce like you know I like. And this punk behind the counter is like, do you want fries with that? Mexican guy. 
And so I'm like, no, Jew would not like fries with that. Just the sandwich, please. And I'm in a hurry. But I have just enough time to sit down and eat if they get me the sandwich in, you know, a reasonable amount of time. Well, I bet you can see where this is going. I go to take a bite of the sandwich and tata sauce. So I march right back up to that counter around the line of people waiting and I show it to the guy. And I say, look at this, tata sauce. I said no tata sauce. And he says, do you want another one? And I say, no, it's too late. I don't have time to wait for another sandwich. And so he says, do you want a refund? Like that's gonna do anything. I'm practically late for my petty and now I won't have time to eat. What good is a refund gonna do me now? What I want is for my order to be right the first time. So. I say, I want to speak to the manager. So she comes out and I tell her, this guy got my order wrong because he does not speak English. So now she's getting all nervous because all the other customers are seeing what kind of service they're going to get here and it's making them scared to eat there. So I say, I want him fired. You can't serve customers if you don't speak English. And I'm showing her the tartar sauce. I'm saying, is this company policy hmm? to put tartar sauce when people don't ask for tartar sauce? Do you put it in the fries? in the milkshakes. This is why they make minimum wage. And even that's too much. They should be paying me to eat at this McDonald's. So I feel like I've made my point, but I don't want them to forget this. So I say, I want the number for corporate. Because you know, so many people in that situation would just do nothing. Would just let them get away with it. And what does that do? Just gives these incompetent people permission to keep being screw-ups. Not me. I'm not gonna take it. Mm -mm. I'm gonna stand up for what's right. Like Susan B. Anthony. So, I get the number for corporate, and I get a refund, and I get a new sandwich, without tartar sauce. (sighs) And I know I did the right thing, but just, it takes so much out of me. You know, it shouldn't be that hard to just get a sandwich. And, after all that, I miss my petty. My feet are a disaster, they ache, my nails look like garbage. I love my petties. It's that place where they give you the mimosas while they do your nails. You know, I can't keep my fingernails long because of the guitar, so the pedicure is like the one nice thing I do for myself. But I had to skip the pedi, otherwise I would have been late for my massage. Mm. But sometimes that's what it takes to do what's right. Sacrifice. And yeah, it's hard. But sometimes you have to do the hard thing. Speaking of which, we haven't had a chance to talk about your grades, huh? I mean, come on. A 3.87 is so close to a 4.0. Maybe you'd be doing a little better if you spent a little more time on your schoolwork and a little less time going to all these marches. The girls march and the tax march and the dingbat march and the please come let illegals rape us march. Di, you know I love you, but I'm worried that you're spending time with all these people and you don't understand how immature they are. You think it's all fun and games with your signs and your chants and your hats. This pink hat, which I can't even say the name of. It rhymes with... Mm. Oh, pussy cat. Only off by one letter. Anyway, disgusting. All these people, honey, really, they just need to get over it. He won, fair and square. And if you look at how things are going, it's going great, just like I said it would. He's got his Muslim ban protecting us from Al-Qaeda, and ICE is rounding up all the illegals, and he passed a big tax cut that's gonna put money in everybody's pocket. They're working on repealing Obamacare, so that'll be gone soon. I mean, it's just incredible. How does he do it? You should be marching to thank him, not attacking him. Trump is a victim, but he's not going to give up. And you shouldn't give up on your schoolwork. Maybe you could stand to give up on the marches. So here is my ode to the fighters, like you and like Trump and like me at that McDonald's. Now, I'm not saying I'm a hero, but other people who stand up and do what I did are definitely heroes. So this is for all of them. All I want is what I want and it's not too much to ask I don't need more but I won't take less or I'll take you to task so if I order a medium and you bring me a large well you have ruined my whole life now bring me who's in charge let me speak to your manager let my voice be heard This injustice will not stand This cup's too big for my hand And if the manager's a woman She's being a total C-word And if I bring my business to your shoe store And take the time to find some pumps I like 
But the Asian salesman lied They don't come in triple wide I'm gonna have his head on a rusty metal pike Oh, let me speak to your manager I have some complaints to be obeyed How dare you make me suffer My life could not be tougher Even Jesus Christ by Judas was not so bitterly betrayed Oh, let me speak to your manager This is where your reign of terror stops You deprive me of what I desired So I'll see each and every one of you fired I'll make this a day you will always regret and now I'm starting to feel very reasonably threatened. That's it. I'm calling the cops. Did I mention I'm very good friends with the owner of this establishment? Okay, die, honey. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Uh, study hard. Okay, bye. Hello. Hello, Dynasty, my love. I'm glad you're back safe and sound in Connecticut. Well... Oh. The summer went too fast. It was wonderful having you here for a few months. And I just want to say I am very proud of you. Yes, becoming a woman, trying things, having experiences. It's very important. That's how we learn who we're going to be. So maybe you shave half your head because you needed to see what it looked like to know that it's maybe not the right look for you. So good very proud. And it's the same with guys, you know. You're very young, 19. It's great that you're dating someone. It's great that he's from Long Island. I hope that means you'll be coming to visit more. But don't tie yourself down. Everyone knows long distance is hard. It's hard on you and it's hard on... I will say it maybe wasn't the best first impression. I made this whole big dinner for the four of us. Your dad, me, you, and antipasta to start. And I made risotto milanese, got some prosciutto, even spumoni for dessert. Went all out. I only mention it because, you know, what happened. I never got a chance to tell you what I went through. You texted to say you were five minutes away, so I start laying out the table and I'm bringing in the garlic knots from the kitchen when I see this Mexican just standing in my foyer. Just stand there. So I think like anyone would, I drop the garlic knots and I scream, Gary, get your gun. And your father runs up next to me and he pulls out his gun and he aims and he fires and oh my God, it is so loud. I've never heard your father's gun before, but it is so much louder than like in the movies, like painfully loud. I'm sure it was loud to you outside, but standing there, ugh. Anyway, the guy ducked, so dad missed, so dad starts to take aim again when the front door flies open and here you come running in and put yourself in between your father's gun and this guy. Oh, oh, like, what were you thinking? Oh my God, you could have been killed. Just thinking about it now still gives me agita. <sighs> so you start shouting at your father to stop and he's shouting at you to get out of the way. And this Mexican kid, oh, I could smack him. He's just crouching there with his hands up. And so, of course, this dummy is your new guy you're dating who just walked into our house and almost got himself killed. And now you start trying to explain things and Gary is furious and just wants to arrest this guy. Naturally, it falls on me to keep the peace because that's what I do. So I send your father to go get a beer and finish getting dressed because he had run in without his pants on. <laughs> <sighs> When we tell this story to friends, it's gonna be very funny. <sighs> so your father goes off and you start trying to get this guy off the floor and he's shaking like a leaf and I ask his name and you spit it back at me so fast I don't even understand it. And then you take him outside, I guess to talk him down or whatever. I guess you told him to wait by the door while you got the wine out of the car and he just walked in because he doesn't understand the language. I'm sure he gets himself into this kind of thing all the time, causing trouble. Porf. Perif. Porfiririo. Whatever. Not even gonna try. I wrote it down after you texted me. Porfirio. Porfirio. Porfio. Porfirio. 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 Porf. Porf. 
Porififio? Puriorio. Porfirio. Sounds like something out of Shakespeare. So, I clean up the garlic knots, and then I come outside to see how you're doing, but you just start yelling at me, and then you're saying, you see, this is why I didn't say anything about his nationality, and you see, this is why I was dreading this. And I said, what are you talking about? It's a little misunderstanding. Relax. But of course, that wasn't dramatic enough for you. You almost killed him, blah, blah. First of all, I didn't do anything. I am just trying to salvage this dinner. Of course, that's all I get out before you start yelling again. Salvage the dinner. What, like that's the craziest thing? Then you stalk off back to your Yaris. And Puff, Puff, uh, Puffreyo turns to me and says, good to see you. And then you speed away. So, dinner's a bust, obviously. It's me and your father. Father just keeps talking about how he would have been completely within his rights to have shot that guy, which you have to admit is true. We tried to put on the news to calm down, but of course the news is a mess too. Fake news. I swear to God. I don't know how these people get away with saying this stuff about the president. Like that he cheated with Russia's help to win. Or that Donald Trump raped a 13-year-old girl, which is ridiculous. I can't believe anybody would say Donald Trump raped a 13-year-old girl. I mean, I have to believe that if Donald Trump raped a 13-year-old girl, they would never have let him be president. That would just be crazy, don't you think? If Donald Trump raped a 13-year-old girl, surely we as a nation would come together and say no, that is an unacceptable thing. So no, I don't believe that Donald Trump raped a 13-year-old girl. Look, that whole tape with the Hollywood access, whatever, that's just the way guys talk to each other. Though if Trump wanted to grab me by the you-know-what, you bet I'd let him. Your father could just deal with it. <laughs> Seriously though, all guys are like that. Everything is sex this and sex that. You don't focus on that, you focus on the good things, the sweet things. Like the story of how your father and I met, you remember? I was walking home from meeting up with some cousins at Friendly's for some ice cream, and your father was hanging out on the sidewalk with some friends just shooting it. And I walk by and your father says, you know, you'd be a lot prettier if you smiled. And so I smiled, and he says, oh yeah, there it is, very nice. And I said, thank you, and he asked me my name, and we started talking. See? Sweet. Romantic. You used to love that story. Now you say you're a feminist, which, good for you, whatever. But come on, not everything is a sexual assault, all right? Gosh, when you get to be my age, you'd give your left arm for a boob grab. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. Especially when I think about Tobias from high school. He always seemed like a good boyfriend. Quarterback of the football team, very big deal. His father's three car dealerships. Hmm? His Dodge Viper, very cool. Kind of always hoped you two would get married. But then one night you come home crying and you say it's all over. I never did find out what happened that night. Maybe you had an argument or something. Maybe he was cheating on you. Hmm? And then all of a sudden you started dressing like a bum. Big floppy sweaters, nothing but ponytails, jeans that didn't fit. Stopped talking about guys altogether. Started to think you might be, you know, a lesbian. So now instead you come home with this guy, Pavorio. All I can keep thinking about since that whole thing was what he said as you guys were leaving. Good to see you. Like we're all friends or something. I mean, that's probably just what he says because he doesn't speak the lay. Oh my God. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Oh my god, Dynasty, I'm just realizing who this guy is. Do you believe this? It's that cashier from that McDonald's all those months ago. Is that who that is? No. But no, my Dynasty, you... He doesn't work at McDonald's, does he? You never told me where he worked, but you... You said you met him at work, but you didn't tell me where he worked. But... Oh, you knew. Do you... Did you know? Do you... What is happening? I swear to God. If this is some weird game you're playing about me with him, I mean, to be so cruel to some foreign kid, doesn't even speak the language making God knows what at McDonald's, only to be taken advantage of by some little immature... To what? For, for why? I don't care. What, what do I care? It's nothing. Do you go and find this kid and you bring him home to me to do what? But no, right? That's not you. No, my little girl would never do that. Unless... Unless he's trying to use you for some kind of green card thing. Oh, if that's what it is, I bet that's exactly what it is. Oh God, you better not be doing anything with him. I bet he's trying to stick you with one of those anchor babies. It's just like Bill O'Reilly said. Look, abortion is always wrong and it needs to be outlawed, but I mean, come on. If some little, 
thinks he's gonna knock up my daughter, I will drive you to Planned Parenthood myself. I mean, mistakes are one thing, but this... Oh, my poor baby. So young and naive. Only a sophomore. Okay, no, no, you know what? We're gonna figure this out. You call me, you know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna sing you the lullaby that I used to sing you when you went to bed. I sang this to you every night, and you loved it. Everything's gonna be fine. Be strong. I don't know where to start with you, Dynasty. Yes, Dynasty, that's your name. It's a beautiful name. Regal, like Destiny, but less slutty. You're named after my favorite primetime soap opera growing up, and it's wonderful. Not like this Denea or whatever you've been going by. How long has this been going on? Whatever, it doesn't matter. It's stopping now. I don't care if you're 21. I don't care if you're a senior in college. You're my daughter, and your name is Dynasty De Benedetti. And I especially don't care what Periphio thinks. Even if he is your... My god, I am so tired of fighting with you. I should be asleep right now, having just enjoyed a nice family Thanksgiving. But instead, you want to ignore me? Fine, then I'm going to do this. Sitting here in the dark while your father snores. But you think I'm not going to have my say? After what you pulled today? Listen to me, Dynasty. I need to know something, and I promise I won't be mad. I just... I just need you to tell me one way or the other. Are you on drugs? Is it the roids? Are roids opioids? Is that what roid rage is? Is it the pot? I mean, if it's pot, that's not great, but I thought pot was supposed to make you mellow. Is it smack? Crack? Is smack crack? Oh, by the way, we got the Fox News program back on the cable box, so thanks anyway. That was cute. So you can stop with the sending us the links to wherever. CNN, NPR, MSNBC. It's all fake, honey. Vox? What's a Vox? Your father and I, we've been on this planet a long time. We know where to get the good information. We don't need your help. Thank you very much. Besides, we get our information from lots of different sources, not just Fox. There's also Breitbart, Limbaugh, so lots of places. And while we were waiting for the cable box to be reprogrammed, we found a new channel called OAN that we didn't know about that has lots of good information. So thank you. And to do what? Take away our one fair and balanced news source right when Pelosi and Schumer and Clinton and Schiff are really doing it. They're really impeaching him when he has so much else he has to worry about. China. Everything. I mean, he's going to be fine. 
because he's a winner and the truth is on our side. But it's just so ridiculous that they make him fight so hard. And everybody that works with him, what they did to that poor Brett Kavanaugh during those hearings, he was so upset. And then they bring in that woman to question her and she just sits there stone-faced like a serial killer, like she has no compassion or feelings at all. I swear, sometimes I think women just aren't emotional enough for politics. He's doing everything right and they're, and they're still doing this to him. And right before Christmas, very nice. I mean, did you see that video of the Christmas decorations that Melania put up at the White House? So sophisticated and European. A very bold take on Christmas. I think even you'd have to agree with that. She is so stylish. I really, I think Melania may be the most beautiful, stunning first lady we've ever had. Stupid libs want to complain about some pictures she took without her clothes on. It's called art, you uncultured morons. They're very tasteful and artistic. Hell, if I looked like that, I'd take some nudie pictures too. <laughs> but she's not just a pretty face. She's very smart. She came over here on a genius grant. They don't just give those to anyone, you know. Very glad you're going to be here for Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. Do not forget that. Do not think that today changes that. That's an argument I won. Thank you very much. Going to be in... Going to be an experience having so many people here. I hope they're as nice for us as we were for them today at Thanksgiving. We were perfectly nice. Not that we wouldn't have been. You didn't have to spend the whole ride over there barking orders at us like a drill sergeant. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. Telling your father not to talk about work? Like he should be ashamed of being a police officer? No jokes. I swear, some of that was just you making stuff up. Microaggressions. What is that? So instead of, ah, it's me. Well, we showed you. We were perfect guests. Meeting his parents and grandparents and uncles and cousins. Oi. Must have been 30 people there. And I think as the only ones there who were white that we represented ourselves very well. Didn't complain once. Didn't say anything about anything. That music blasting all day. That mariachi noise. La cucaracha. You know what that stands for? The cockroach. Why would you want your most famous song to be about cockroaches? Ugh. Tacos for Thanksgiving. And the tacos didn't even have any cheese. Those weird soft tortilla things. I mean, you'd think that the people who invented tacos would know how to make them correctly. They know you can just go down to the store and get the right kind of shells, don't they? But we kept our mouths shut. Even after, dear God, even after dessert, when Perifio tells everyone to quiet down, and he takes your hand and he starts talking, and your father and I look at each other and we don't know what's going on because he's speaking Spanish, which was very rude of him not to include us. But we figure he's just talking about the holidays and families and whatever. And then, and then he gets down on one knee. And I take your dad's hand and I squeeze it because I know he wants to stand up and do something. But I'm just telling him, like, with my mind, just sit there, don't do anything. Don't make a scene. And then the kid pulls out a ring. And I look over at his mother and she's smiling at me like a... And I just know, I know he told her he was going to do this. And then he says, Vase Kerse Kazar Comigo. I don't even speak Spanish, but I will never forget that sentence. And you say Sim, which I guess is like C, but more stupid. Then you two are kissing and everyone's cheering. And it's like, what just happened? Because it can't be what I think it was. Can't be that. Mm -mm. What can we do? Feliz this, and parabens that, and now people are making toasts, and now I'm grateful I can't understand what anyone's saying. Your father, he just shut up and drank, which is the best it could have gone. Snuck off into the living room to watch TV. He wanted to watch football, but of course all they had on was soccer, but he made it work. We're very flexible people. And of course your father and I have to assume that you're putting on the same show we are. That Perifio sprung this on you. And so, of course, you have to say yes to all those people there. You don't want to make a scene, you just... You just say yes, and then you take care of it later, quietly. And so as soon as we can, we say we're gonna leave, and we try to grab you, but they won't let you go. And you say it's fine, just go. So we do. But it's driving us crazy. All the way home, I'm trying to tell your dad, who's ready to flip his lid, I'm saying no. It was very unfair of Perifrio to put you in this situation. But you know, you did what you had to do, and later on you'll take care of it. It's all very sad for you, really. So we have to be ready to be there for her, right? And I calm your father down. He wants to... I don't even want to tell you what he wants to do. 
He wants to call immigration and have him raid the whole house, ship everybody out, ICE. Obviously, he's joking. Not the kind of joke we can make to you anymore. Ever since you went to that college, you completely lost your sense of humor. So we get home and I start calling and texting you, trying to find out when you're coming back. You don't get back to me. Very nice, thank you. Now dad's starting to freak out again. Wondering if maybe he really does need to send people over there. So I tell him, no, I, I did hear from you. You texted me, you're just feeling so overwhelmed. You need some time to think and you'll be back in the morning. Not my best work, but it does the job. He goes up to bed, but not me, not your mother. I sit and wait, watch some HGTV. And then at four o'clock in the morning, celebrating with friends, won't be home, heading to CT tomorrow. Celebrating? Celebrating what? What has he done to you? Are you pregnant? Is it drugs? Engaged, how can you be engaged? Ugh, this, you're too young, it's ridiculous. I mean, for Christ's sakes, he works at McDonald's, okay? Just forgetting everything else. How's he gonna take care of you, huh? You think you're gonna live off your father and me, the two of you? If that's what you think, you got another thing coming. No, 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 it's terrible. It's terrible and it shouldn't happen. I mean, other people can do whatever they're gonna do, but that doesn't mean it's right. I'm fine with anybody getting married, get married to whoever they want, fine, whatever. But I mean, what if you have kids, huh? I mean, people wanna marry whatever person. That's fine, that's their choice. But then I do feel bad for the kids because, you know, you wanna go and make your life harder? The kids, the kids have no say. You can't argue with that. <sighs> Christmas is coming, Christmas is coming. And my daughter's gonna be here with her fiance. And his family. I can tell you a few things though. The first one is, in this house, we speak American. I mean English, you, you know what I mean, American English. They can speak however they want, whenever they're out and about, but not in here, nuh -uh. Second, this is Christmas. It's about the birth of Jesus Christ, and we are going to mass just like we always do. I don't know what these people believe, but if I hear one bad word about Jesus Christ, I am going to lose it. Finally, you better make sure none of those people comes into this house and starts bad mouth in our country or our president. If they have something smart to say about the flag or police officers, they can just keep it to themselves. Nothing a offensive a comprende, por favor. I'm sure, I'm only going to be tense enough between this holiday and you know, this engagement business and the impeachment. My God, seems like everything is going wrong. But the one thing that nobody can take from me. Not even you, Dynasty De Benedetti, is my music. What, you thought you were getting away without a song just because you destroyed my heart? It's four o'clock in the morning. You think it's gonna be quiet for him? He's dead to the world. Gary, Gary! See, I always tell him if there's ever a fire at night, he's gonna be a crispy McNugget. Anyway. When I was a little girl, I rode through the sky On horses made of pink and purple clouds And every night before I went to sleep My mother told me about that musky prince Who was watching over me And I said, yes ma'am And I said, thank you and please And I followed all the rules Cause rules make everything fair And fair makes everything right and so I'll ride through the sky on cloud horses into the American lights. And I did everything by the numbers, even when the going got so tough. And in the end I will go to my just reward Cause Jesus never lied to me when I raised my hands And I said Amen And I said Lord give me strength And I followed all the teachings Cause teachings impart wisdom And wisdom is what wins the fight And so I'll keep out the darkness of communism Wrapped in American lights God, where are the footholds? Feels like I'm wearing Louis Vuittons on ice. I know that you challenge me to help me grow. 
But maybe for five seconds You could just be nice And I cried uncle And I said I give up Cause I'm crumbling under the weight Cause the weight is too heavy And heavy needs to go on a diet So even though I want a coke I'll order a coke zero With a chaser of American light Sure hope things turn around in 2020. Woo! Not guilty. Told ya. Didn't I tell ya? Friggin' witch hunt. Ooh. Woo! Tastes like victory. Oh, die. I feel so... You know, I bet this is how your father feels when the islanders wipe the floor with the rangers. It's just like... like lightning racing through me. It's just like Trump said, winning. So much winning. It's like when we used to go to Atlantic City for a long weekend and play the slots at the Tropicana and hit really big, like, like 60 bucks. Hmm. Now I want a shrimp cocktail. Oh, baby, I miss you so much, but I'm glad you're up for finishing school. So important for your future. I know it was rough going there for a while and you thought you might have to push back graduation and skip a semester, but you're almost there. Home stretch. And it's 2020. Oh, yeah. The De Benedetti year. Time for new beginnings, huh? Your father's about to retire from the police force, which is great. We've been talking about traveling more. We haven't really been out of the... <coughs> we haven't really been out of the country since our honeymoon. We're thinking about maybe visiting Aruba, sit on the beach, get tan, drink out of a coconut. Oh, in Paris, so romantic. Drink some wine, eat some cheese, go up to the Eiffel Tower. I don't know what else. I cannot wait. And I can't wait for you to do all these special things with someone you love. And he's coming, Dynasty. I know he is. I know I've said this a million times over the last few weeks, but I am just so, so sorry about what happened with the engagement. Just so sad. But listen, if that wasn't what Perifio wanted, I mean, that's his loss, really. I mean, if he says he broke it off because he doesn't want to be a part of our family, like, what does that even mean? I'd be offended if I understood it. Ask anyone about this family. Ask at the police union, or down at the Elks Lodge, at church. You know how many things we get invited to? How many friggin' magazine subscriptions we have from our friends as kids? Heck, go ask down at the salon where I get my hair done. You remember my hair guy, Deshaun? Black and gay? He just makes me laugh the entire time I'm there. <laughs> Calls me K-pop, whatever that means. He's always inviting me to come party with him and his friends on Fire Island. Which... I wouldn't mind, you know. It sounds kind of fun. You know the last time your father took me dancing? Not since we dated. You know your father, it's, it's not his thing. Where was I? Oh, Perifio. Not wanting to be a part of our family. You know, I feel bad for him, really. He probably doesn't even know what it's like to be part of a normal family. But that is not your problem. I can't believe you're not meeting guys up in Connecticut at your school. Have you tried going to some fraternity parties? Or in your major, huh? Political science, which, sure, okay, I guess. When you were a kid, you said you wanted to make dresses. Always watching Project Runway. But you never did sew, or, or draw, so. I guess that really wasn't anything. Just reading all the time, with your fantasy books. But I guess maybe poli sci means lawyer, which, okay, that's good. You can definitely take care of yourself that way. And really, honey, that's what I worry most about. Just how are you going to take care of yourself? A good job. Or, and I know this isn't PC to say, you find a guy, and you get married, and he takes care of you. It goes back to olden times. Guys were the hunters, and women stayed home and took care of the family. So, it's not political or anything. It's just how we were made up. Ugh, it's this... This is what it's been like trying to talk to you for the past few years. I just feel like I'm walking on eggshells with everything coming out of my mouth. It is so... But, at least I'm trying, you know? I mean, you know, your father. He is who he is, and he's not gonna change. He's gonna say whatever he's gonna say, and if... If some people can't take it, then maybe they just need to stop being so sensitive. Because, at the end of the day, Sometimes the world isn't a friendly place, and you've got to learn how to take it if you want to get by. 
you know, I don't love everything that comes out of his mouth, but he's a good man. He loves you and me more than anything in this world. For Valentine's Day this year, he took me to Red Lobster. So, I mean, men are just different. I don't know why these feminists want to pretend they aren't. They're bigger, they're stronger. I mean, even forgetting everything else, Perifio never really struck me as like a manly man, you know? On Thanksgiving when he proposed, oi, he started crying like a girl, like a lot. Like it was not attractive. I bet he cries all the time. And that's not what you want in a man, you know? You want your man to be a man. He's not supposed to be one of your girlfriends. Sometimes I wonder if he's one of these transvestites that dresses up like a woman to sneak into women's bathrooms and harass them. Happens all the time. Disgusting. But really, I don't want to be equal. I don't want like a lady firefighter. Like if my house was on fire and she got sent in here to carry me out. Are you kidding me? With this ass? Anyway, I know those days after the breakup were hard, but... I just have to say, it was so nice getting to mother you again, if only for a little while. Doing your nails, brushing your hair, braiding it. Thank God you let it grow out again. Making you gnocchi with cream sauce, your favorite. You know, because I'm such a horrible mother. <laughs> to just hold you and rock you and wipe your tears and tell you everything's gonna be okay. And it really is. Speaking of guitar, <laughs> I just, I want to sing this from a place of gratitude. I know we both had a very challenging year last year, but we've overcome it. And I know I feel like I've grown a lot, but we all have a long way to go. So what is the good news? Tell you, I'll tell you. What is the good news? Yeah, tell it to me. Here is the good news, tell me, oh tell me, hear now the good news, oh, screaming from the mountain top. There's a bright white light and it's shining, there's a bright white light and it glows, there's a bright white light and it's killing the darkness, the darkness that everybody knows. Now can you feel it, feel it, oh I feel it, now can you feel it deep down in my bones? Tell me you want it, I want it, oh I want it. Tell me you want it, I want it each and every way. Cause there's a bright white light and it's shining. There's a bright white light where we roam. There's a bright white light when we're lost in the blackness. The blackness that's keeping us from home. But we fight for the light. And we try for the sky. And we give for the love that we get and we see what we need but we'll never concede that we sweat through this threat but we'll never regret or forget you can bet that we'll pay back this debt cause there's a bright white light and it's shining there's a bright white light in my eyes there's a bright white light and it's blinding but I don't need to see to turn my head to baby I love you I just want you to be happy that is the most important thing to me <laughs> um hello dynasty de benedetti my daughter light of my life two months it's been two months since I've heard from you after all I did for you taking care of you after the engagement ended I keep hoping I'll hear from you that you'll calm down after your last big blowout with your ridiculous accusations like I called Porforio some slur. I never did. I never would. No. All this hippy-dippy nonsense. You want to talk about emotional labor? How about the labor that I was in for eight hours pushing you out of me? Accusing me of giving you guilt trips? Do you know how much it hurts me to hear you say that? You should be ashamed of yourself. Gaslighting? What even is that? You want to see some gaslighting? Give your father a can of beans and a match. <laughs> <laughs> They've gotten into your head, honey. These liberals. I kept hoping it wouldn't happen. I hoped you were stronger than that. You know, I know you're so close to the end, but I think maybe it really would be better if you skipped the rest of the semester and just came home, tried to find a school closer to home to finish school, huh? Maybe Stony Brook? I mean, especially with everything going on now, all these people starting to freak out. Wah. Wah, 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 wah. God. Everybody whining about some stupid cold from China. 
That's not even as bad as the flu. We can't even get three months into 2020 without some new BS for everyone to freak out about. It's just like Alex Jones said. They tried with the impeachment and it didn't work. So this is their new scheme to keep everybody scared. Talking about canceling baseball and closing down Disney World. I mean, they won't, obviously. And of course, as usual, the freaking libs just want to make it all about Trump. Instead of blaming the real people, the Chinese, where it came from, people eating bats, like poisoning, infecting the whole world, and then you want to get mad about people calling it the Chinese virus? That's just a fact, Dynasty. Facts can't be racist. Toilet paper. I have not been able to find toilet paper. Your father's been stealing it from work. It's so stressful. In this mask business, forcing everybody to wear masks, like that does anything. Like we're all surgeons. When if you listen to the people who know what they're talking about, they're saying that the effects of wearing the mask are worse than the virus. Breathing problems. You could poison yourself with carbon dioxide. I'm never wearing a mask. Never. If that means other people get sick and die, fine. More toilet paper for us. It's <laughs> Just like Sean Hannity said, the cure is worse than the disease. It's like when they make you throw up because you ate a bunch of watch batteries. Tried to go to Costco, and you won't believe what happened. The security guard puts up a hand like this, and she says, Ma'am, you can't come in without a mask. And I said, I can't. I can't breathe with that thing on. I have a medical condition. I have a note from my doctor. It's from Dr. Finnegan, my gynecologist. But she still tries to tell me I can't come in? Well, you know what happens next. I demand to speak to the manager. So they send him out, black guy, and he starts feeding me the same BS. I start laying into him, telling him he doesn't understand what freedom means. He doesn't understand this country. This is my country. And he just stands there with his arms crossed. So I coughed on him. <laughs> coughed right in his face. How does he like that? And everyone else starts recording it like on their phones, which good. Everyone needs to see how these people are treating us. I mean, I needed yogurt. I had to go to King Cullen. You know, their selection isn't as good. They don't have the brand I like. I was so furious I came home and I cleaned like a mad woman. He cleaned even your room, even though you haven't been here even for a weekend. These things you've been posting. You know, I never like to believe that stuff about college turning people liberal. It was just, you want a good job, you go to college. It's just about opportunity. But now seeing the stuff you've been posting, seeing what it's doing to you, I'm starting to see it. The uh, indoctrinating. I mean, my God, the trappings of capitalism. <laughs> I hope it's just a phase. I wasn't this concerned when I thought you were gay. But really, what do you think we're gonna do? Turn off capitalism? Hmm? Then what are we left with? Communism, hmm? you haven't said it yet, but really, what else is there? Sometimes I really, I worry that I'm gonna lose you. But then I tell myself I'm just being silly. I mean, you're my daughter, I'm your mother, that's never gonna change. But that engagement thing was a close call. <sighs> liberals, so weird. I mean, I feel like, I feel like liberals are just hippies that never really grew up, you know? If you told me 10 years ago that I'd be worrying like this about the stupid Democrats, I would've laughed. I mean, Clinton, the first one, was a disaster, but we survived. Couldn't keep it in his pants. That stupid blue dress. And then Obama, worse, obviously. I mean, Trump came out and put to rest all that stuff about Obama being a Kenyan, but he didn't say anything about him being a Muslim. Hmm? Trump didn't mention that, I noticed. And this is what he's turned the Democratic Party into? So, I got a little aggression to work out. I call this one, This is America. That's not a mask, that's a muzzle. Yeah, you think I don't see? It takes more than a mask to muzzle me. Looks like you've forgotten that we're all born free. This is America. You can lie to yourself and it's clear that you do. But don't think you can lie to myself too. You're infected with liberalism, now you're screwed. This is America. This is America. Land of the free, home of the brave. We won the war, we freed the slaves. We take all types, as long as you bow down to the stars and stripes. I have a wonderful daughter, yeah, that's what I said. Think I'll let you put your junk in my daughter's head? On me you cannot tread. This is America. I'll go to a Costco. If I don't, it's your loss. Think I gotta listen to a Costco boss? My money's too good for your yogurt sauce. This is America. This is America. No soda tax. I eat red meat. I toss my garbage in the street. My coat is mink. I'm free to not give a flying fart about what you think. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta let it all out. 
please call me, honey, and calm down. You know, everybody else wants to freak out about this virus hoax thing. That's their business. Trump even said he knows a special medicine that takes care of the virus. And guess what? Your father knows where to get some. So, huh? See? We're always one step ahead. Suckers! <laughs> Your father's dead. <laughs> he... He's gone. It's so horrible. I, I just... Please, Dynasty, please. How can you... I need you. Your father needs you to be here right now. I'm a wreck. I'm, I'm in shock. I, it that doesn't make any sense. It, it shouldn't have happened. The doctor said... No, no, I'm... He had a heart attack. He died of a heart attack, but but the doctor said it was because of what what he was taking. The the I wrote it down. I, who cares? Whatever the the hydroxychloride. But but no. I mean, that's that's what the president told us to take. The president is he gets. At first, he was fine. We were both fine. We were just living our lives while everything else was getting worse and worse and people were freaking out, but not us. Not us, because we had our secret weapon. Did you did you take it, honey? He, he made sure to get enough so we could mail you some. Did you... Did you take it? I, I don't... Uh, I just want you to be safe, honey. That's all I want. <laughs> oh, my God. He did start having some some chest issues. Uh, we were out at Outback Steakhouse this is after going to a, a, a no-mask protest against that idiot Cuomo. Uh, I have to tell you, it was just, it was so nice to just be around some normal people. I've wondered if that's what those Trump rallies are like, you know? I hope he has one here. I'd like, I'd like to go to that. There were some nurses there, people dressed as nurses. I don't know anybody could dress up as a nurse with their masks on and their arms folded, giving us judgment like they're better than us because they're nurses. Like being a nurse makes you so smart or tough. Get over yourselves. Anyway, after that, we went to the Outback and they had just brought our Bloomin' Onion. And, but we had to leave because he was feeling like dizzy and... um like tight weird he was just but the next day he was fine and he went to work like he was fine but then i get a call and i i, I rush to the hospital but by the time i get there he's already <laughs> mm -hmm. And you, you, I can't believe I text you to say that your father is dead because God forbid you should answer your phone and you text back saying sorry for your loss. It's your loss. Your loss. You terrible, heartless. How are you not here? I am your mother. Your father is dead. You're in quarantine. That's your excuse. And then, and then you say... Dad wasn't taking it seriously. You blame him. Listen, listen to me. I don't give two SHITs if you're in effing quarantine. You get your ass down here. Your father is dead and you're going to his funeral. To say nothing of, you know, being there for your mother. Ah. You should be here, you little bitch. I shouldn't even have to do this. God. I don't know if you remember, but a couple years back for our anniversary, we we got each other the gift of taking care of all this, setting up everything in advance, which seemed kind of morbid and weird at the time. But, you know, now, thank God, because I can't imagine having to pick out flowers and caskets right now. It's all it's all already taken care of. 
He wanted to get buried in his Islanders jersey, and I said, absolutely not. He said, what do you care? I'm going to be in a box. And I said, hey, I'm going to be right there next to you. And what about the viewing? No. So we compromised. He's going he's gonna to wear a nice suit and an Islanders tie. Maybe I should have just let him wear the jersey. What does it matter now if, if, if that's what he wanted? I didn't even want to be buried. I wanted to be burned up, cremated, just spread me around to be done with it. But your father said, you're not getting away from me that easy. Anyway, you see, you don't even have to do anything. Just be here. I just... I feel so alone in this moment. And the one person who should be here for me, who was choosing not to come, because instead you're buying into some ridiculous hoax. I just... I, I have to say it right now, I kind of hate you. I do. You have betrayed me and your father. I have half a mind to drive up there and grab you and drag you down here. That's what he would have done if it was me who, you know, died. I mean, not only am I your mother, your family, your blood, but we're still... I'm still supporting you. Paying for your, your school and your apartment. Putting clothes on your back and food in your mouth. I could stop. Just as easily. Just as easily as you cut me out of your life, that's how easy it would be for me to do to you. And then, then see what you think then, huh? See how fast you grow up. Figure out that the world doesn't revolve around you. God, everything, everything's just so upside down. Oh, and speaking of everything being upside down, and this is just the stupidest thing. But the libs and all their brilliance have decided to invent a new insult, and you'll never guess whose name they used. My name, Karen. And so they're using the word Karen as an offensive, derogatory, racist term. It's the N-word for white women. Isn't that horrible? I mean, it's nothing to me if someone wants to call me Karen. That's my name, don't wear it out. Karen, Karen, Karen. And like, it's not bad enough that these young libs are mocking baby boomers, lashing out because they're ruining this world that we're leaving them, and they're all depressed on Prozac. And soon it'll be your world. Me and my generation will be gone. I'm not gone. In heaven. Like my Gary. He's up there waiting for me. He better be. Hope he's not getting any ideas. Up there with Marilyn Monroe and Anna Nicole Smith and Pamela Anderson. Is she dead? Someday we'll be together again. But how long? How long do I have to be alone? I mean, Dad doesn't have any problems anymore. He's in heaven. But what about me? I'm not that old. It could be decades. Hmm? If you won't listen to reason, maybe you'll listen to emotion. I mean, if you really are going to miss your father's funeral, your own father's funeral, well, this is what I'm going to perform there. Your dad made me swear that I wouldn't sing at his funeral, but he's dead and I want to, so I'm doing it. It's the same song I wrote for our wedding, which he also didn't want me to sing at, but I did. This is who I am, and since I don't have a daughter anymore, I guess I'm the only one I can count on. Gary, 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 you surround me like a hug. Where do I end and you begin? You're in me like a drug. Gary, 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 from morning, noon, and night You fill me where I'm empty, where I was blind You gave me sight Gary, 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 Gary Gary, 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 Gary,
so glad that you are mine If you were someone else's, that would not be fine Gary, 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 I long for your gentle touch You caress me in my soul till it's almost much too much Gary, 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 Gary Gary, 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 Whoa! Where did that come from? Hope that doesn't happen at the funeral. You are such a disappointment. Hi, honey. So, I thought I'd try this one last time. I'm in the hospital, Di. Kinda hard to breathe. There was another girl in here with me when I got here. Right over there. Young, like you. She was on one of those breathing machines. And then she died. The machine went beep, beep, beep. And some people rushed in and they tried to bring her back. But she was gone. There's someone else over there now. Everybody working here seems very tired. I feel bad for them. I'm trying... I'm trying to not make a fuss. You know, I... I asked the nurse for some orange juice. She brought me apple juice. It's fine. Could have used some vodka. <laughs> when I started getting sick, I called around to all my friends asking them if they would give me a ride to the hospital. And none of them would. I'd just seen everybody at your father's funeral a month ago. But none of them would help me. And you know who did? Who finally brought me to the hospital? Porfirio. Porfirio heard that Gary had passed and he told me he reached out to you for the first time in months to get my phone number so he could pass along his condolences. And after all the stress of being sick and not being able to find a ride, I just broke down crying on the phone with him. <laughs> and he, he asked if there was anything he could do. And I said, you know, yeah, I can use a ride to the hospital. <laughs> and he said, okay. And, and he did, he came by and he drove me over here. And then he, he waited with me. I, I told him, I told him not to, you know. He'd already done so much, and I didn't want him to get sick, or get his family sick. But he waited. He had his little mask on, and he chatted with me. I wasn't feeling so great, so he did most of the talking. I've been very lonely. I don't think I even realized how lonely I'd been. Isn't that weird? But he just told me about his day and himself. He's from Brazil. I didn't know that. You didn't tell me that. Or maybe you did. <laughs> I asked him if he would ask you to call me. And he said, he said he would, but he doesn't think that you like him very much anymore. I said, Porfirio Dynasty doesn't like anybody. <laughs> <coughs> we laughed. <laughs> and finally, they called my name, and 
it was time for him to go. And I, I gave him a hug. I probably shouldn't have, you know. He shouldn't have let me, but he did. I mean, by that point, I knew I was sick with something. I just, you know, hoped it wasn't this. And then I went in to see the first doctor, and uh, I told her how much trouble I'd been having breathing, and uh, and she wanted to send me home. They weren't even going to give me the test for the for the COVID thing. And I said, I don't think so. You give me that test right now. And they didn't want to, but they did. Oh, you know I got that test. <laughs> and it came back negative. Or positive. I, I never know what the doctors mean with positive or negative, but whatever. I got it. I got the, the virus. And now here I am. I'm stuck here. And now I'm really alone. You couldn't visit me even if you wanted to, which you don't. But even if anybody wanted to visit me, which they... And at any minute, I start having breathing problems. And, uh, and they put me on that machine. And once that happens, you're pretty much as good as gone, as I understand it. And then that'll be it. And I realize that if I, if I die here, the last person I will have really talked to will be Porfirio. The last person I hug. <laughs> you know, I've been lying in this hospital bed for 10 days now, giving me a lot of time to think. And this isn't a very good time. Not for me, not for the country, not for the world. I look around this hospital and it's so crowded, but no families. It's just sick people and doctors, nurses. So different from how it is outside. I didn't know it was like this, Di. It makes you wonder about all the things we've heard. The things we're being told. You know, who's telling the truth? What is the truth, you know? Is that a stupid question? Probably. I didn't know Porfirio studying to be an architect. But he says it's taken a long time because it's expensive and he's got to give money to his family and the language is hard for him. But he's a nice guy. I always said he was nice. Text from Porfirio. Says he talked to you and... You're busy. What? What does that mean? What did I do to you? Huh? That is so terrible. Hmm? All I did was love you and care for you. Should I just say I was wrong about everything and you were right about everything? Do you, do you just need to hear me say I'm sorry? Hmm? I'm sorry, all right? What did I do? <laughs> that I deserve to die alone in this hospital bed. With no one. No one who cares. Maybe, 
Maybe you'll find this funny. That video of me coughing on the Costco guy. Somebody posted it on the internet and now it's got like millions of views. A lot of people saying I did the right thing. A lot. Some people are mean. But millions of people. It's ironic. I've gone viral. <laughs> That's a good one. Millions of people cheering me on. And I'm stuck here alone. America, how are you so beautiful? America, you make me so very proud. America, so glad I get to live in you. America, from the sky up to the ground. From the sky up to the ground? Well, that doesn't make any sense. again. It's America K Karen. That's right. It's your friend Karen De Benedetti. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my returning fans and new subscribers. Almost up to 10,000. Not bad, huh? So, here we are again. Election night 2020. Mmm. You like this? Hey, I, yep. See? It's kind of hard to paint on your own t-shirt while looking at it in a mirror, but I think it came out pretty good. Mm -hmm. Wait, what'd I do? Oh. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Because you're smart. Kidneys. So, it's gonna be a great second term. They haven't called it for Trump yet, but he's way ahead, so it's pretty much a done deal. It's been quite a first ride these last four years. But our man is not done yet. Gotta fight back against all those people trying to make us live in fear. COVID. What a joke. No one could have handled it better. I will admit, it was kind of scary when he got it. I think I was more scared about him having it than when I had it. <laughs> but, of course, he pulled through. It's not even that bad, really. And it's just like he says, once this election is over, you're never gonna hear the word coronavirus again. Right after this, I'm heading to a big party so we can all be together when his second term is announced. So bring it on, you stupid libs. You wanna whine and moan about Russia interfering? Well, let me tell you what. If they're interfering to keep Trump in office, then I say, bring on the interfering. They're helping to save this country. Those Russians would be more American than any of the liberals I know. Yay, Russia. How do you like that? You libs want to steal this election with your fraudulent ballots and your mail-in yada yadas? But even if they do, he just shouldn't leave. I mean, who's going to make him? Pelosi? She does nothing. Honestly, when is the last time she even said a word that mattered? You know, sometimes I wonder if she's like a double agent, like those old spy movies, like she's secretly on our side, because she just does nothing. Nancy Pelosi, secret Republican. We see you, girl. You keep not doing what you're not doing. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you my hopes for Trump's second term. Um, I hope we keep winning. I hope the economy keeps doing great. The stock market is huge. I hope Trump keeps law and order, which I'm sure he will. I mean, I want everyone to live in peace and love, but I gotta admit, seeing some of these libtards getting their heads cracked open is kind of poetic. You think you're gonna go up against our cops and win? Shoot first, ask questions never. That's what you get. My late husband was a police officer, and I back the blue. If you don't back the blue, your black is gonna... No. If you... If you back the blue, you don't back... If you black the... If you don't back... If you black the blue... If you don't back the blue, your black is... If you don't black the... If you don't... If you don't blue... Mm. Hold on, I wrote it down. If you don't back the blue, you're gonna be black and blue. <laughs> I'm having bumper stickers made up that say that. They'll be available in my merch store, opening very soon. I hope conservatives stop being demonized and blamed and painted as hateful. You know, Trump has talked about fixing the libel laws so that you can sue news people that lie, which seems great, kind of obvious. I don't know why that hasn't already happened. Like Fox News, what a nosedive they've taken. 
used to be so fair and balanced, and now so liberal, I can hardly stand to watch it anymore. Except for Carlson. And Ingram, and Fox and Friends. And Hannity, and Judge Pirro. But other than that, just pure garbage. I hope everyone has the chance to be as happy as me. I mean, they do have that chance because they live in America where they're free, so I just, I hope they take that opportunity to be happy. Because, you know, happiness is a choice. So you just have to make the choice to be happy. You know, if, you, if you're doing drugs, stop doing the drugs. We have so much freedom in this country, and we talk about it so much that I don't understand how people don't get it. Why is it that the only freedom people are interested in is the freedom to complain all the time? It hurts me. It hurts me in my heart. Ugh! People that don't appreciate their freedom, the amazing freedom that our military fought and died for, I hate it. I hate them. They're affecting my happiness. Why should we have to put up with them? Hmm? You know what Trump should do? He should round up all the libs that don't appreciate this country and ship them out. Leave America to the real Americans. Then we'll finally have some peace and love. Instead of having to argue about some people's lives mattering more than others. Are you kidding? How dare you? My life is at, matters just as much as yours, as anyone's. Kiss my ass. You kiss, you kiss it right here. Go ahead. You know what? Life is good. I'm healthy. I'm happy. I got a new man, which, thank goodness, the dating scene is kind of rough these days. But luckily, I met him in the hospital. <laughs> I was in a room with two beds, I was in one bed, and then the person in the other bed, they kept dying. Two of them died. And then they brought in Sam, and we started talking, and he made me laugh. And what's really funny is, you know, for the first week, he was in kind of rough shape, so he didn't get out of bed. But we were talking, and he was making me laugh, and we had a lot in common, and so I started getting kind of interested. And then, right before I got discharged, he gets out of bed to say goodbye to me, and I see that he's shorter than me. Which, you know, I don't usually go for, not my type, but he'd already charmed me. So, when he asked if I wanted to stay in touch, I said, sure. And then I just had to, you know, hope he didn't die. <laughs> But he didn't, and about a week later, he started coming over for dinner, and one thing led to another. So thanks, coronavirus. Ha! Plus, being sick for that long made me drop a bunch of weight. So thanks again. Honestly, getting coronavirus was one of the better things that happened to me this year. Sam, my new beau, doesn't even like to talk about politics, which I find so refreshing. Sam doesn't need to make everything political, shove his beliefs down everyone's throat, because he knows that it doesn't really matter. We're all one human family on a journey of love. His last name is Miranda. Isn't that pretty? Makes me think of standing on a porch next to an ocean, feeling the breeze dance across my skin. Hmm. Maybe I'm thinking of Voranda. Anyway, I think it's French. I mean, sure, it feels weird to be starting over, you know, at my age, when I thought I'd be winding things down in a good way, in a natural way. I, I thought I'd be doing a lot of my living through, you know, through my daughter. We finally talked last week. We sat down and she said that if I want to be part of her life, that I have to make all these changes. Says I need therapy. That I'm manipulative and narcissistic. Excuse me, young lady. I raised you, not the other way around. You don't tell me how to live my life. Boss me around? I don't think so. Boundaries. You want to talk about boundaries? How about a big beautiful wall? How's that for a boundary? So selfish. I don't know where she gets it. That's not true. I do know where she got it, but I didn't raise her this way. She's my daughter, and I will always love her more than anything, but she has been brainwashed. Radicalized by Antifa. They took her, and they put these ideas in her head, and now... She's as good as dead. So, I don't know where she is. I don't know what she's doing for life, for work, for money. I don't know where she lives. I don't know if she's sick. I don't know if she's participating in these riots against the police. BLM. Well, they got the BM part right. <laughs> it's just like Candace Owens says. Police kill more white people every year, but we don't riot about it because we're not violent like black people. 
I'm just quoting Candace, so how can that be racist? I don't even, I don't even see race. Real Americans have evolved past those kinds of divisions. It's just a shame black people haven't. But you'll see. Trump is about to wipe the floor with Biden, and then you'll all be sorry. So, here's one for all the libtard cucks who are going to be crying their eyes out tomorrow over the loss of Sleepy Joe Biden and Kabbalah Harris. Oh yeah, I said it. If you're a real American, you can get this on iTunes. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and... Um, mm, what's the other one? It starts with an R. Uh, I wrote it down. Comment. Comment. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. Okay. There's a place that I love, the best country in the universe, who's founded on principles of freedom. It's filled with amazing people, the best people in the world. And as for the rest, well, we don't need them. Cause we're gonna come back twice as strong And be better than the best we were all along And you can't stop Trump even if you try Cause we're the best, best, and God is great, great So feel the love, love, and stomp the hate, hate Cause I don't care if you're black or white Gay slash brown plus purple or Jew If you don't love the U.S. then it's U.S. versus you If you want to riot, don't you even try it. If you don't back the blue, then you will be black and blue. Cause we're the best, best, we've got it all. All the stars and stripes, stripes, we heed the call, call. Love every face, 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 do what I say, say, say. I don't see race, 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 cause I'm okay, K, K. Cause we're the best, best, so shut your mouth, mouth. If you want socialism, socialism, but head to South America. Cause if you want to take what's mine, we'll discuss one thing that's true. We always take care of our own, so it's U.S. versus you. 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 God bless America. Yeah! Oh, before I go, have you guys heard about this cannon site? Cannon? Kina, Kinan, Quanon, Quanon, Quan, Q or Q, Kinu, Pin, Quan, Quanon, Canon, Canon, Qua, Kink, 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 whatever. I wrote it down. There. Q A N O N. Just discovered it. You know, there's so much that the lamestream media isn't telling us. But don't you worry, Karen is on the case.